Hello, I'm Audra Dears Lawson, a professor of risk and crisis communication at Christiana University College in Oslo, Norway. And it is my pleasure to be here to discuss the challenge of communicating in the EU throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID pandemic is an example of a societal level health crisis because it disrupted all aspects of people's lives. Government's COVID-19 containment policies also changed the way we work, consume and interact at least in the short term, and potentially pave the way to new behaviors, policy, and procedures emerging across all the domains of social and work activities. In this presentation, I will provide a summary of how we approached the analysis of key academic and professional research. In so doing, I will demonstrate a very clear pattern of effective and ineffective communication with citizens emerging across countries. Then I will discuss a practical approach to building communication strategy during major health crises based on these best practices. Because of the truly global nature of the COVID-19 pandemic, it affords practitioners, researchers, and policymakers a uniquely rich set of insights into major health crises. Accordingly, there has been an unprecedented amount of scientific and professional research published about it from around the world. This presentation summarizes 236 scientific publications and institutional reports related to the pandemic between 2020 and 2022 including an exhaustive search for English language resources on the 11 countries, nine as countries of focus, two as countries for comparison. This figure summarizes the six best practices for communicating during the pandemic identified by scholars and practitioners. These best practices align with the WHO's framework for risk communication and community engagement. They also demonstrate transferable lessons for future health crises and disasters. So let's talk briefly about the highlights from these lessons learned. First, effective pandemic communication strategies should focus on explaining to citizens what self-protective behaviors should be taken and why within each country's national context. Second, research suggests that in a pandemic, governments should adopt a positive tone that supports citizen confidence in taking action communicating engagement and responsiveness because quite frankly, defensive messages are less effective. Third, there's an overall citizen preference for transparency and a constructive management of fear and anxiety. Additionally, fourth, two-way communication or citizen engagement was crucial in the relative success of each of the communication initiatives. Governments must also actively listen and respond to their citizens' needs. Fifth, it was also recognized across countries that tailoring the messages to different demographics, information needs and attitudes from the government was essential. For example, minority communities within countries often have different information and communication needs. Sixth, finally, regardless of relative success in managing the pandemic, trust in the communicating institutions is a central, if not the central feature of communication success. You see, in many ways, we know how the COVID-19 story has ended. Our job at this point is to understand how we can collectively do a better job to ensure that in future health crises, communication strategy is developed and applied to improve health outcomes. While absolutely no nation's response was perfect, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, and Sweden all demonstrated good communication practices across. Likewise, there were limitations or challenges to effective communication practice identified in Bulgaria, Hungary, and Lithuania. Simply, those countries with comparatively poor communication strategies experienced more deaths during the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, one measure of the success of a communication effort should be based on the evidence of lower deaths and improved citizen adoption of self-protective behaviors. Overall, the literature analyzing COVID-19 communication supports the need for an effective stakeholder relationship management framework. This framework focuses on the interactions between the institutions managing COVID-19, 
citizen interests, and COVID-19 related issues that help lead to self-protective behaviors being enacted. However, it also recognizes that these interactions occur within a complex information environment comprising multiple platforms, for example, social media, traditional media, and face-to-face -face communication, where there are often contradictory messages and different actors competing to capture citizen attention. This framework for thinking about communication strategy accounts for not only the complicated personal factors like political ideology or existing attitudes in considering the citizen related attitudes about COVID, but also the broader organizational context, as well as how relationships between institutions, citizens, and COVID-19 are influenced by challenges like disinformation or the politicization of health issues. Research finds that issue-related institutional citizen and information factors all affect message acceptance. This framework is meant to be used as a contingency approach to building communication strategy. A contingency approach argues that agile crisis response using research-informed message design and evaluation is especially important in complex situations like COVID because it allows governments and public health authorities to diagnose the key communication challenges within any given population and then design messages to meet those citizen information needs. This also reflects one of the best practices learned from COVID-19. So let's summarize some of the key findings for each of these factors. With regard to issue-related factors, across the EU, UK, and US literature, citizens' knowledge of the disease, their own risk perceptions, and the amount of control they felt like they had all directly affected their willingness to take behaviors to protect themselves. Issue-related factors also need to influence strategy in a few different ways. For example, within the context of COVID-19, people were already afraid. Therefore, it makes more sense within this context to focus on building positive messages about reducing risk rather than building more fear. For example, in countries like England and Hungary, where fear-based messaging or an emphasis on punishment for non-compliance was used, there were lower levels of citizen compliance with the instructional messages. Second, institution-related factors. Now, no matter whether the research was analyzing high-trust environments like in Sweden or explaining why political polarization or eroded institutional trust environments were correlated with low levels of adoption in countries like the US, UK, Bulgaria, and Hungary, institutional trust emerged as central to citizen behavior. In short, Building and maintaining good reputation and trust, especially related to health issues, is an essential tool for governments and public health to effectively manage future pandemics. Third, in terms of citizen-related factors, they highlight the demographic and attitudinal predispositions for people to enact self-protective behaviors, but demographic factors will vary across location, culture, and timing but a more universal citizen factor is efficacy or our confidence in our ability to enact behaviors and our belief that those behaviors will lead to positive outcomes. The evidence from across the countries clearly concludes that as governments and public health institutions, they should first explain what people should be doing, second, provide clear instructions on how to perform behaviors correctly, and third, provide evidence that there is benefit in citizens performing particular behaviors. Finally, in terms of information related factors, popular media and scientific research widely recognize that the COVID-19 infodemic poses a serious threat to persuading citizens to adopt self-protective behaviors. The bottom line is that when citizens feel they don't have enough quality information from their governments or public health authorities, they will fill their perceived information gaps by relying on other sources of information, opening the door to mis- and disinformation. Additionally, it's important to recognize that in prolonged crises, several pieces of research also identified a new challenge related to information fatigue. It emerged as a prominent factor in countries like Germany, Italy, and Lithuania. 
And finally, where there are lower levels of information literacy, that is being able to discern good and bad information, citizens are more resistant to adopting self-protective behaviors that were recommended or required by governments and health institutions.